as you can see, a bit of a change of scenery today, where I'm out in the Otways rainforest outside of Lawn on the Great Ocean Road. Whoa, why did I do this sitting down? And I'm on the way to a waterfall called Henderson Falls. Right now I'm probably 20 meters or so away down the trail from it, and I can already hear it sounds like it's pumping with a lot of water. So we're gonna head over there, mess around, do some waterfall photography, which is something I haven't done in probably close to a year. So if you've clicked on this video expecting some waterfall photography tips and tricks, you come to the wrong place, because I'm gonna be having to figure out and get back in the groove of what I'm doing. So we're all in this together. I don't know why I keep doing these squatted down. Here we are, Henderson Falls, as you can see behind me. There is a lot of spray coming off and there's rain falling and dew coming off the trees. It's very wet. We're in a rainforest, so you, that makes sense. Now I've had a little bit of a wander around down at the base of it. And there's a lot of cool options for foreground down at the bottom of the waterfall in terms of there's logs sitting at the bottom that have fallen and the stream coming out from the bottom of the base. So I'm gonna switch onto my wide angle lens to start off with. That way I can hopefully find something with a interesting foreground to complement the waterfall, which I think for me is usually a bit more interesting than just a shot looking straight at a fall. And then we've got an overcast day and it's super dark and gloomy down under here, under all these trees. So I'm probably not gonna need anything crazy in terms of filters. I've already got my polarizer on the wide angle, but I'm just gonna bring them out just in case I do wanna get a slower shutter and blur out some of the water. And then I'm gonna keep this microfiber on me for any spray that's getting on my camera the lens or that camera that lens. Let's get out there. So I've got these fallen trees logs down here at the right at the base of the falls. And I think they might be an option for a good foreground leading line type situation. But I think I'm going to try to find something else first. My issue with these is that this waterfall and the area around it is sort of like a really compact, claustrophobic almost little area. So I'm sort of wanting to get something a bit more wide and sort of show off that. Whereas with these logs, we're sort of right choked up on the bottom of the waterfall where if I did use these as my foreground, it would just be the logs and the waterfall make up most of the shot. Where I sort of want to capture a bit more of the area around as well. So I'm going to have more of a wander through. Last time I was here, I did get a shot that was using this stream up, going straight up the waterfall as like a bit of an S-curve. So I think it's probably best to maybe get that shot later if I want to have another go at it, but maybe to find something different this time. So after maybe 10 minutes or so of wandering through, I found a shot that I'm pretty happy with. And it's probably going to be best to show you guys here on my GoPro, just for the safety of this camera. Um, I've got my camera set up right in the stream. As you can see, I'm about shin deep, ankle deep, where I found this nice sort of little mini waterfall over a log in the stream, leading us up to the main falls. Um, yeah, it's given me a lot of foreground interest, showing the area and also showing the power and the size of this wall that the um, falls are coming down. I've also got a little bit of sun happening at the moment. It's probably mid-morning, so there's still some, a little bit of goldenish sunlight which is happening right behind the falls, which is really cool. And then I've only got my polarizer on, which is giving me sort of as much as I need in terms of a slower shutter. So I'm at about one second. I can even go to maybe 1.5, 1.3. And then as I experiment with different shutters in the water, that's also creating these white hot spots, which I love in a waterfall shot. Because depending on what your shutter does, the way the water moves can look completely different. So something like a third of a second can be completely different to one second. So it's a lot of fun to sort of go through try different shutter speeds, see what you can capture, and just see what the water does. So I'm gonna keep doing that for a bit more. I'll show you guys that photo. We might have a bit more of a wander around here. And I'm feeling pretty motivated, so I think we might head out to um, another waterfall a bit further down the trail. I had about an hour and a half or so long drive to get here. And I was thinking a little bit on the way about the idea of motivation when it comes to landscape photography. And it's something that I get asked about a little bit when I do markets and things like that about finding motivation for an early sunrise start or a super early alarm, getting up early in the dark, in the cold this time of year, and sort of finding motivation to power through those things. And I think for me, motivation has never really been an issue because if I don't want to go take a photo, I don't have to, and that's cool. I feel like if I'm forcing myself when I don't feel motivated, if anything, 
then I'm doing a disservice to myself because I'm trying to force creativity and force feeling good and appreciating being out. And sometimes I just don't feel, feel like I want to. And that's okay. God, I'm sweaty. So I think for me, much more so than motivation, the issue I face is overthinking things in the build-up or finding reasons not to go out. So like today, for example, I, whoop, I assumed it was gonna be busy because it's Saturday. So usually for me, that would be a reason not to go out if it's gonna be busy and families and people everywhere. Another example would be a few months ago, I went and shot a video at the Clifton Springs old jetty. I'd been wanting to shoot there for months, years even before that, but I always put off doing it because I thought it was a super popular photography location. There's not really a point in shooting someone that everyone has shot. It's overdone and it'd probably be busy when I was there. I went there, no one was there, and I shot a photo that I thought was pretty unique to me and my style, and it's one of my favorite photos of the year so far. So I don't really have a solution to this issue that I'm talking about. Sometimes it's something I can get through, and sometimes it's not, and that's okay. I think, ultimately, never have I once pushed through those feelings and gone out and then regretted it. Even if I don't take a good photo, I'm not happy with how the video turned out, how the photos went. It's always good to be out regardless. So I just thought I'd share that if anyone else has gone through similar feelings or goes through the same process of having a spark of motivation and quickly finding a way to extinguish it. It's okay, it's normal. We all go through it. And when you can overcome it, it makes it even more special to be out. <clears throat> so I'm about a week post COVID by the way. So if I sound out of breath, I'm super sweaty, I know. Um, that's why I haven't been out since having COVID. My lungs are still struggling a little bit. I've run out of breath a few times already today. So I'm gonna put the camera away now. Power through, head to the next waterfall, and then see how it turns out. So I'll catch up with you guys when we get there. Heck was that? A little cavey canyon type thing. And I think we're almost here. So I just found this cool old house behind me and I was like, oh, I'll get a few handheld shots of that. And I walked around the corner and there was a car parked in it, like an old shed. So I think I was just taking photos in someone's house. So I guess the trail just runs through someone's backyard. You can see that house behind me. Hopefully the trail runs through someone's backyard. I'm not just in someone's backyard, not on the trail. I think either way though, I'm gonna put my head down now and um, just head back to the car. As always, I really appreciate the support and you coming around and joining me on this little adventure. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the photos and if you've got any thoughts on the whole motivation versus overthinking thing that we talked about earlier. Let me know. Is that something that you're affected by? How do you deal with it? Let's get a conversation going. But yeah, I'm going to head back to the car. Thank you again and I'll see you soon in the next one.